if I start talking really quickly, that's because there's about to be a thunderstorm and I don't want that in the background of my video. Hi, my name is Elise and for the very last day of Pride Month, I'm going to be talking about some books by indie authors that I've recently read and they're all by authors who identify as part of the LGBT community. I did plan to have a lot more books in this video, but unfortunately this month has been very hectic, so I have not been able to read as many books as I wanted to. So I will just say right now, if you're an indie author and I had accepted a book of yours uh, to review, I will review it eventually. I just had a lot going on this month, so there will be a part two to this video at some point in the future. But yeah, without further ado, I'm going to go over five books by self-published slash indie authors. They are all by authors that identify as part of the LGBT community, and all of these books include LGBT representation. I do hope you'll take some time to check out these books because I feel like indie authors are not often discussed specifically on booktube, so this might be a great opportunity to find some authors you really enjoy. And also, it's the last day of Pride Month, so might as well do something good for an LGBT author and support their work. So the first book I'm going to talk about is called Electric Love, and this is a contemporary adult romance about a second chance sapphic relationship. I first want to say that the author is super sweet. She reached out to me in a DM to take a look at her book and she is just wonderful. So if you want to support a very nice author, here you go. So this book is about two women named Alex and Eden and in the past they had a relationship but things got messy and they are no longer in a relationship until they stumble into each other a couple years later. I haven't read a lot of second chance romances but I have read a lot of books with very messy, complex, emotional characters because those are always my favorite characters and I really appreciate characters like that in the context of an LGBT novel because I feel like often with books that have queer representation there's almost this expectation that that representation will represent the entire LGBT community which is just ridiculous because clearly people who are queer are also just people. They do not have some shared personality. So I really love queer books that explore that very messy side that sometimes people have. But overall, this was such a great book. I really, really love the complexity to it. And again, this is a messy book. I know I've said that like three or four times in the way that the characters are just confused and they make some poor decisions. But that's something I really appreciate in books. I love books that explore the human side to just not always doing the right thing. So if you love books that are complex in that manner and just the trope of second chance romances in general, I would check that out. If you are pretty familiar with my videos, you'll notice that all of these books that I'm mentioning are in genres I don't typically read, but I really wanted to branch out and try some new genres here. So the next book is called Lying with Lions, and this is a historical fiction book, which is usually a genre I do not read. I have not read historical fiction in a very long time, but this does feature a sapphic relationship and I have never read a historical fiction book with sapphic representation, so I was really looking forward to this one. And if you're someone who loves really dark, dramatic, complex historical fiction books, you'll probably love this one too. It is about a woman named Agnes and she's the archivist for this family, the Bryants, and while she's doing her work, she kind of discovers all of these secrets about this family. And as she is uncovering this web of secrets and lies, things just get a lot more complex. And it's just very dramatic. And it's a book that has lots of layers to it. If you like books that intertwine politics within the plot, you'll like this one too. It's very heavy on the politics side. And also, like I mentioned, it does have a sapphic relationship, but the romance is very subtle. And I actually really appreciate that. Even though I typically do read romance books, I love when queer relationships can be on the subtle side, but without it being like this is a secret and that's why it's subtle. Because even when books rely on this secrecy plot for queer relationships, in a way that doesn't make the relationship for the reader any less subtle, it's still very prominent to the plot. But in this book, that was not the main plot point. So I really enjoyed that because there was a lot of 
other drama going in on the book and I liked that the drama was taken away from the queer relationship and instead focused on the immense amount of secrecy going on within this family. So if you like historical fiction, check this out. Also, I really loved the atmosphere of this book. It's very dark and broody and you just get a really good feeling for what this time period is like. You can definitely tell that the author has done their research. It's so well done and the writing style is amazing. It's super complex. I'm not someone who usually reads very complex text because I like to fly through books but it's just such a rich book in description and the dialogue is really well done too. It just sounds like the period that it's written in which it should you know that's the goal of historical fiction but it, i was just so impressed with the writing style here and i think you'll like it too if you like books like wuthering heights because it gave off that same atmospheric dramatic vibe the next book is called the stars will guide us back and once again this is in a genre i don't typically read but i was so impressed with this book it is a collection of 13 short stories and it's within the sci-fi speculative fiction genre and in a way i probably could not tell you what happened in this book especially since it is a bunch of short stories but it is very abstract and it's definitely something you want to read for the writing style i sat down and read this book probably in like one or two sittings definitely in one day because i was just so captivated by this writing style i don't read too much speculative fiction because sometimes it's a bit too abstract for me i like to understand what i'm reading and i hate when i feel lost in books which is typically why i don't read too much fantasy but i was so impressed with the way that this author dealt with these rather short but complex short stories within this book. I know that they are very short stories and I don't really like when books are so short or at least the short stories within a book are so short that you feel like you want more but every single one of these stories you just got enough. Enough that you understood what was going on but it was fine if the story ended right there which I really appreciated because again I hate when you feel like you're left hanging in a book. This book also contains some really great representation. There are queer characters. There's also some representation for mental health and chronic illnesses. And I just thought all of it was handled really well. And furthermore, I enjoyed the fact that even though this was technically like a sci-fi book, it felt very relatable. I loved the characters. There were a couple stories that I really felt like I could see myself in and I just appreciate that so much because as someone who typically strays from sci-fi because I feel like I can't relate to it, this did that so well, did the opposite, that I could relate to the characters because I'm someone who likes to read books because I want to relate to them. So if you want a book that's abstract but still very relatable, choose this book to read somewhere on your TBR because it's just wonderful. Again, the writing style is just so gorgeous and imaginative. It's so unique and atmospheric. So pick this one up if you are looking for some really lovely writing. So the next book is called The Audacity and this book was so fun. It is a science fiction book and it's about a human named May and she gets abducted by some aliens but within this abduction there's some good things that come out of it for her. She learns how to raise a spaceship and she pretty much finds herself within this found family of aliens and it's just such a fun silly book. If you love humor within your books, try this. I'm not someone who typically seeks out humor, but I'm glad I read this one because that was the element that I really, really enjoyed in this book. It was just lighthearted and fun. I really loved the dialogue. It was just funny. Like I don't read many books that are funny like that and I just really enjoyed it. And I also liked the found family and friendship element of it. And the main character, May, is also asexual, which is a type of representation I've really been looking for recently, so I really enjoyed that. And also, just a random little comment on this, I listened to the audiobook, which the author has for free on Spotify, and it is placed as, an, uh, as a podcast on Spotify. So 
it's in podcast format if you've ever listened to podcasts on Spotify where they have separate episodes and I've never really listened to an audiobook in this format and I actually really really enjoyed it. I know that's such a random little comment about an element I liked in a book, the format of the audiobook, but it's just something I found so endearing and it really made me feel connected to the author in a way while listening to the book because every chapter which is an episode on spotify you hear the chapter which the author narrates and then afterwards the author has a little bit of commentary they provide some insight into the book and just their writing process and i just thought that was such a nice little touch again i know that's such a random little detail to enjoy so much but it just felt so wholesome and fun. I really loved hearing more about the book and it's just nothing better than an author discussing their work that they clearly really enjoy creating. And then the very last book is called Ira. Yes, the theme of this video is kind of me reading genres that I don't typically read and then really enjoying the books and then being a little concerned that I've been missing out in these genres, but basically this is a fairy tale retelling of the story of the Snow Queen and it's about a cursed woman and a park ranger and they kind of develop a relationship romance kind of thing going on except of course the one woman is cursed so that's not exactly going to work out and there's some secrecy going on but clearly they both really want a relationship and overall this was a fun book i really enjoyed it and i loved the spin off of this fairy tale because it's not often you see a queer retelling of a fairy tale and it was just very nicely written i also liked it was pretty fast paced it was a very short book i read it in a day but again like i mentioned before uh the book electric love or i'm sorry not electric love for the book the stars will guide us back um even though it was short I didn't feel like I was missing things, which is great because I prefer books that are much fast paced, but the issue there is sometimes authors rush it too much and it feels like I'm missing part of the book, but that was not the case at all here. It just flowed really well and I really enjoyed it. The writing style is incredibly easy to read, but not in the way that it's a too simple type of writing style. It's just readable and it made the book very enjoyable and I felt like I could get lost in the story. So overall, I really enjoyed this one. It was such a fun retelling because lately I've not had much luck with retellings, but this one was wonderful and I really enjoyed the sapphic twist on it. Anyway, those are the five indie books I'll be mentioning for this video. I'll have links down below if you're interested in supporting the authors and I think almost all of them if not all of them have an option to be free if you have kindle unlimited so that is definitely a perk if you have that but i hope you'll check them out again do something good for the last day of pride month support some lgbt authors because i'm sure they would really appreciate it and their works are great so you might want to check those out anyways thank you so much for watching i will see you again in part two of this video eventually sometime in the future but have a good day. Goodbye. Basically, this is a fairy tale.